Okay, welcome to ETCS Bytes Back, first of a series of short talks covering the principles behind ETCS. Many of you have looked at some of my longer talks and they can be a little bit of an elephant to eat. So I thought some smaller ones covering simple points, not lasting more than five to 10 minutes would be helpful. And we're gonna start by looking at the flavors of ETCS. Before we do though, perhaps we need to understand what ETCS is. Well, it's an abbreviation of four letters standing for the European Train Control System, ETCS. And ETCS is a safety system. It is designed to do three key things. The first is to stop trains moving. That may sound a little odd, but it is to stop them moving unless they have authority or the driver has taken over the supervision. The second element of ETCS is part of a typical train protection system, which is to prevent the train exceeding its movement authority, exceeding the distance it has been authorized to travel. And the third element is around the speed of the journey. ETCS supervises the speed to make sure the train does not go too fast. Exceeding the speed on a curve could lead to a derailment. So ETCS is a safety system which is designed to maintain the safety of train movements. And it's part of a wider system. And that wider system is called ERTMS, the European Rail Traffic Management System. And ERTMS and ETCS are terms which are often used interchangeably by people who are careless about language. But they are different. ETCS is the safety component of ERTMS. So what else forms part of ERTMS? Well, GSMR, the Global System for Mobile Communications Dash Railway, is a radio system designed to allow voice communication between the driver and the signaller, and that is secure communication. It also supports data communication between the ETCS on the train and the ETCS at the track side. The GSMR specifications are quite old. They are similar to 2G, which you may remember on your mobile phone. Due to the age of these specifications, it is now time to look at upgrading the communication network. However, because so many trains use the system, there needs to be a good migration path. There is a work stream underway looking at the Future Railway Mobile Communication System, FRMCS, and how that will replace GSMR within the ERTMS suite of systems. So we have a safety system, we have a communication system. One of the functions of ETCS is to enable trains to move freely around different parts of the rail network without having to change locomotives because they haven't got the right safety system or changing drivers because they're not authorized to operate. In order to support that, ERTMS comprises also of a set of harmonized operational rules. The whole idea being that a driver who has been qualified in ETCS and understands the operational rules should be able to move seamlessly across borders. The fourth element does not yet exist. It is intended to be a traffic management system. However, the advantages of a traffic management system to the industry are less well defined than the introduction of a safety system and harmonized operational rules. It is also more challenging to agree, get agreement from all the railways about what a traffic management system should do. ERTMS started back in the early 2000s and was designed to be a system 
which would break down barriers and free up trade within the European Union. The early specifications were produced primarily by the suppliers, supported by the ERTMS user group. However, time has moved on. And in a very similar way to Windows, there have been different versions of the ERTMS system. Sometimes, like in Windows, the change has been a radical change to the underpinning system, fundamental change to the core of the processing. At other times, the changes have been more nuanced, some extra features, some correction of some bugs, some adding of functionality which doesn't change the core system. So just like Windows, there have been a number of versions of ERTMS or more particularly ETCS published. Whilst ETCS was under development, a number of versions of ETCS were proposed by various suppliers and were developed, agreed, piloted, tested, and errors were detected. By 2008, a version of the specifications was stable enough that the European Rail Agency, ERA, felt that they could publish it. And it was published as baseline two of the specifications and release 230D. The actual documents published were released 230. However, very shortly afterwards, it was discovered that there were some small errors that needed to be corrected. And so a debugged version was produced and published. Baseline 2 enabled pilot lines to be in, brought into service and experience to be gained on the operation in ETCS. However, there were many facilities that the railways wanted which were not included in the Baseline 2 specifications. So in around about 2013, a Baseline 3 set of specifications was produced. This set of specifications included many new features which were not compatible with a Baseline 2 set of specifications. However, that version also had some issues with it and they needed to be corrected. And in 2014, release 340, otherwise known as maintenance release one, of baseline three was published and became a legal version. Now the difference between baselines and releases is that if you have a train at a baseline, it will work with that baseline and in theory, lower baselines. However, it will not work with a higher baseline. So a baseline two train will not operate successfully on a baseline three trackside. However, a baseline three train will work on a baseline two trackside. If we have a baseline three train, it will work on a track baseline three trackside for either of the two releases. And so in 2016, extra functions and many error corrections were introduced in baseline three, release 360, otherwise known as release two. Now, just like Microsoft, ERA don't want to have to maintain old sets of specifications. And so if you're deploying ETCS now, there are rules about which baseline and release you can use. If you are purchasing and implementing a new train, then you cannot use baseline two. It has to be a baseline three. And ideally, you would use baseline three, release two, the latest set of specifications, because that includes the best error corrections and the extra facilities that may be needed on for the operation of the train. However, if you are installing a track side, then again, ideally, you would install a trackside to baseline three, release two. However, if there are lots of trains operating already on a route and they only have baseline two in the onboard software, then you may need to introduce a baseline two trackside. 
So what of the future? Well, obviously, the next issue would be baseline four. And baseline four is well under development. It is hoped that the specifications will be published early in 2023. It will introduce some new functionality and will not be compatible with baseline three trains operating on a baseline four track side. So to get advantage of the baseline four features, you will need to upgrade trains to baseline four to work on a baseline four track side. However, that can be expensive, so there is some talk of having an interim stage where some features can be implemented on a baseline three trackside and train to enable a migration. But that is yet to be decided and will be discussed in a future ETCS Bytes Back.